Okay, okay. go Let's ahead. See. He's not quite ready yet. I'm ready now. Okay, he's ready now. Go ahead. All right. So we are for cyber augmentations. Since the beginning of mankind, people have been trying to strive to help themselves perfect what they could be. Think of things like amputees. They lose their arms and their legs. That's terrible. What, what are they going to do? They can't walk anymore. They have no legs. But with cybernetic augmentations, we can recreate their legs. We can give them stronger, better, faster legs. We can make them jump like 20 feet in the air instead of like two. If somebody gets their arms cut off, we can make that. We can make it so they could lift a car, but their hands would still be delicate enough to hold a nice ripe tomato without it exploding all over the place. Anthony, I pass it to you and your sweet cybernetic voice. Uh, well, you can do it, though. <laughs> if it should, oh, God, no way. Okay, I will say it for you. I will continue on Anthony's behalf. This is where humanity has been going. With the technology we have today, we can make this a reality. Think of it. Within 10, 20 years, we can have this. We can create people that have robotic arms. So, like, with amputees again, they can hug people once more instead of, like, trying to with their nubs. The, like, not quite, but almost. It's really awkward, trust me. Think, this would help people accomplish so many things so much faster. I pass it to you, the other team. Here's the microphone. Since you're on the other side. We as a human species have always been good at adapting to our environment. We've built tools, we've learned how to build fire, build homes, and create a clothing. We've also learned how to hunt and trade with animals and how to get food from our surroundings. With our intellect and resourcefulness, we've been able to do that in this world. However, it's not just the world around us that we desire to change. On paper, that would look like expanding our education. We improve our bodies with our diet and exercise, and we train ourselves to be able to defend ourselves from other, other attacks. Many of those have wanted to become more than human through the use of cyber cybernetic augmentation or becoming cyborgs. Many people now have become what we classify as cyborgs, but we don't always see them with as that as a great deal of it is therapy for those with disabilities such as hearing loss or those who have lost limbs and this goes on. However, there's a major difference between using cybernetic for therapy and those who use it for what would be known as an enhancement. Those who use it for enhancement use it for gaining an edge and better being better than each other, not those who actually who would benefit from the use of cybernetics. As defined by the online Webster Merriam Webster dictionary, Cybernetics is the science of communication and control theory that is concerned especially with the comparative study of automatic control systems as the nervous system and the brain and mechanical electrical communication systems. An enhancement is to increase or improve in value, quality, desirability, or attractiveness. So cybernetics enhancement is the science of improving the of one's control system for value, quality, desirability, or attractiveness. Cybernetics disrupts the ethics of being human. Okay, back to you guys for your four points. Let's face it, we live in a world that depends on technology now. Tell me, how often would you use your cell phone to call up your local pizza joint? Answer a lot, because we all eat pizza, let's be real here. How many times do you listen to music on your iPods? Answer a lot because everyone listens to music. I'm even guilty of it. I don't even like most of the music. We live in a world that depends on technology. And really, when you think about it, with cybernetic augmentation, technology is just pushing itself forward to give us something new that we need. Also, the enhancements do good. It helps us when we can't help ourselves. Take me for an example. This voice is helping me communicate in my time of need. See, if we had cybernetic augmentations, Anthony here would be able to speak without having to worry about these silly things such as a voice box. Laryngitis? No more. 
cybernetic augmentations, they are technically here within a way. Because a Canadian man named Stephen Mann has already had this for over 34 years when he created a cybernetic eye for himself to see how it would work for him. This has caused a lot of controversy for the poor man. However, he does not regret a single decision he's made with doing this. And technology, though not quite in the way that we want it to be, like I can't cut off my arm and get a robot one, like that's not there yet. But we do have this technology, and we have had this technology to create artificial things or enhancements that would help the human body work better, such as a pacemaker. Those have been around since the 40s. The first man to get one was in 1947, I do believe, if I remember correctly. But that man went through an experimental surgery, and he lived longer than the man who gave it to him, doubling the age. The doctor died within his 40s. The man who got the pacemaker died within his 80s. also have control over these augmentations it is our decision I pass it to you the opposing team the first point I want to bring up is the ethics involved with cybernetic augmentation we all know how technology new technology is usually passed on to the military first like the inventions of radar and radio they were only brought up in, during the 1940s, during one of the biggest wars of mankind, World War II. Uh, if adopting the newly developed cybernetic augmentation to the military, you would be creating a new weapon that, in our opinion, would violate the Geneva Convention, specifically Article 35, Part 2. It is prohibited to employ weapons, projectiles, and materials and methods of warfare of a nature to cause superfluous injury or unnecessary suffering. And part three, it is prohibited to employ methods and means of warfare which are intended to or may be expected to cause widespread, long-term, severe damage to the natural environment. Natural environment can also include yourselves. Weapons. Weapons has always been a controversial topic, but employing weapons integrated into the human body would destroy the aspect of being a human being. Um, the most familiar argument against cybernetic augmentation is the safety objection to it. So things such as like using steroids <coughs> and then sports or using Ritalin to be better on your SAT to keep you calm and using coping techniques to produce what's known as a desire baby. They're troubling because they seek the improvement at a cost of incurring a medical risk because you never know if it's going to be okay or how people are going to react if they're even being implemented into their bodies. Uh, my second point is the public opinion of cyber augmentation. Uh, according to Business Insider, they did a poll uh, back in 2014 that 72% of U.S. citizens are not interested in getting an implant and 53% of those 72 uh, think that it would be a change for the worse in their environment. It's a clear, gives a clear picture that people are not ready for this technology, they do not want this technology, and they think that it'll make society worse. And the more that people stay as athletes, rely on drugs or genetic fixes, the less that his performance actually shows his achievement, it shows what others can do to make him better. It's not your personal achievements anymore. It's not showing anything um, it's just showing what cybernetics can do to make you look better. And how would you know how much is too much? Like how, what's the normal, what would be the limit when it comes to cybernetic augmentation in humans? Um, my last point here is um, cybernetic augmentation also makes it uh, widespread for computer hacking. Wireless implants that have been implanted now can be run off Bluetooth signals, which would be a computer hacker's dream in order to get into somebody's mind. Um, and the technology now is not up to date, but you can see as technology progresses, those cybernetic implants can become a security risk to not only information, but to the person's health and well-being. All right, well, 
break for uh, before the open debate. Go ahead, Tyler. Uh, first thing I want to bring up here is we were talking about NFTs earlier and how augments are help us. Um, there's a difference between prosthetics and augmentation. Prosthetics is a form of therapy, which is used to heal or help someone gain, regain their former strength. Augmentation is to enhance beyond the abilities of oneself. So a bit of a difference there. Um, prosthetics are OK. We see that it's been a very successful form of medical enhancement. Augmentation, you're pushing the limits of human boundaries. You're playing with fire that shouldn't be played with at all. You're making it so there's going to be humans out there that are far beyond and greater than everyone else. And it could become create a divide among society and cause a lot of harm. All right. Let's just see if things start. Isn't technically a prosthetic limb an augmentation of some sort? When you think about it, it's helping someone enhance what they actually are. Because a man without an arm is a man without an arm. But a man with a plastic arm is a man whose arm is no longer existent, but he has an item of sorts to create a way to hold something once more. And another one is, you talk a lot about the ethics, or ethics, of being a human. <coughs> I can't talk anymore, but you talk a lot about what it is to be a human. However, what about the people who have an artificial heart, such as a pacemaker? You know, like, one of their valves doesn't work. Does that mean that the people who have had these implanted them, the over three million people who have had this happen, are they no longer human? Do they no longer have their humanity because they have a robotic thing inside of them to help them pump blood through them? That, my friend, is called discrimination. A man known as Steve Mann often gets throughout his life, such as when he was attacked at a McDonald's in Paris because he had a robotic eye. And some man just said, hey, I want to take this off of your face. Okay, this is our last point about causing a societal divide. Um, and with pacemakers, pacemakers is actually not an augmentation. It's a form of therapy. And it's not it's not an artificial heart. It's helping control the pace of the heart. So it's going to be used as a form of medical therapy rather than a medical enhancement. Um, I That's a very controversial topic. There's a lot of debate and a lot of arguments that this technology is actually degrading human society. You see that people, uh, there's a, like quite a few studies done to do that people get stuck on their phones, basically. You're losing that interpersonal human connection. So just wanted to make that clear that the use of technology is a controversial argument and doesn't always stand up. Since we've become such a dependent, we rely grace on this thing known as technology. It's almost become a part of us. We can't live without it anymore. Like, technology has done so much for us, such as the medical sciences. Without this technology that we use, can we actually live? Can we live without the medical science that we have? Can we live without all of these things we need? Most people suffer from a thing known as nomophobia. Nomophobia is just the fear of losing one's cell phone. Is this really depressing to know? Yes. Because, like, really, when you think about it, like, I used to be able to go a day without this, but people have actually been found in the fetal position crying because they've lost this. I've known, like, six people who have done it. It, it was actually kind of funny. That's the thing that for all these controversial arguments, kind of like stress is raising human society. You can't go a day with a little piece of technology that's only come up in, in the last <coughs> 10, 15 years. Because I 
thousand years, but you know, it's deep even though the progression between the Great open debate. Okay. So Cybernetic enhancements are a thing of the future. They are going to come. They're going to start out small, and we, as doctors, or whoever's going to be invested into this, they will start out small and test it on various subjects to see how it affects them. And they want, we will, oh my god, this, with this voice I could not take anything seriously. With, we would try to prevent things like, well, we would try to not go to the extremes of maybe RoboCop or Deus Ex, but, Zach, please not do it. My voice is not doing it for me. We can't go to the extremes of RoboCop or Deus Ex because that's beyond us. We won't be able to see that kind of technology for like centuries. Maybe 22 or something will have that, but for now, we're just talking small things like a robotic eye to help the blind see once more. Or that looks like human. hands, you know, like that thing in Star Wars. After Luke got his hand cut off, he's like, ah. <laughs> we can create that hand again, so he can, you know, once again wield his lightsaber and stab Darth Vader if he wants to. Another thing is, discrimination is something that humanity will always much, have. It's much like bullying; it's an idea, a concept. So we don't like to think about it being a thing that'll always be there. It is. It's an idea that no matter what century we're in, no matter where we are, it's something that's always going to be there. Discrimination is much alike it. So no matter what happens, these purists, oh, long live humanity, long live having all our limbs, that will always be there. As even with these things becoming more and more daily, there will always be people that just done. don't. You're done. Peace out, suckers. <laughs> 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 Tyler and Caleb, you're closing to the Beat that. Collect <laughs> <laughs> yourself, collect yourself. Cybernetic augmentation is a harmful and unethical um, technology, and believe it or not, it is becoming more and more readily available today. Um, it's actually predicted that by 2050 that robotic enhancements will be able to attach <coughs> to human subjects. Um, it's actually promoted a lot of unethical testing on animals, and there's been actually human tests that are not exactly fruitful as in an article from Wired Magazine about a German woman who installed augments into herself by herself. She was doing some crazy stuff with magnets and installing them into her body to create electromagnetic field feelings. She's harming her body quite extensively because she has no anesthetics to do this and she gets someone to hold her down and she installs them herself. Um, it's, this technology is promoting something completely absurd and crazy that people are trying to do these things and it's just not right. I go back to a couple of my points where it can become a security risk between your wireless transfer of information and public opinion. People seem not to be ready for this technology and they don't want this technology. Um, it's even further proven with your movies and video games see things like Terminator, The Matrix, Deus Ex, which Deus Ex actually has this very clear societal divide on humans and cybernetics. It almost starts a war. Terminator, again, I don't know if there's another. Um, yeah, cybernetic augmentation is an unethical piece of technology that humanity is just not ready for. I doubt we'll ever be. Nice close. Thank you very much.